The Nintendo eShop continues to grow, with new releases coming thick and fast. One of these releases is Smoke and Sacrifice. Will it emerge as a must-buy title, or be engulfed in the smoke of mediocrity? Let's find out. Hello everyone, this is Glenn at SwitchUp. Many thanks to the developers for this review copy. The story of Smoke and Sacrifice revolves around a village who worship the mechanical sun tree. We are introduced to Sachi, a young woman who lives in the village with her baby son. Soon into the story, Sachi reveals that she must sacrifice her young son to the sun tree as per the ancient beliefs enforced by the village elders. She soon starts to doubt the village elders' motives though and decides to delve deeper to see if her son is still alive. The remainder of the story is told through interacting with the characters you come across whilst on your journey to search for your son. There is no voice acting, with the story instead laid out through text. It's an interesting story and it's quite nice to feel like you are rooting for the protagonist in a game right from the start. You feel intrigued to help Sachi unravel the mystery that has surrounded her village for so long, and story receives 16 out of 20. The graphics in Smoke and Sacrifice are quite interesting. They involve 2D character models on top of a 3D, almost isometric landscape. It works quite nicely for the most part, although it can sometimes cause perspective problems when trying to interact with items on the playing field. In terms of the graphical style, Smoke and Sacrifice goes for a gothic aesthetic. It very much reminds me of a Brothers Grimm fairy tale, but with an almost steampunk twist in regards to the mechanical world that's around you. It's a very smart looking game, with a lovely hand-drawn look about it. In terms of the animation, things are nice and smooth, but main character Sachi does have that marionette feel to her movement, which can be a little jarring at times. The graphics are complemented by an ambient soundtrack that fleshes out the world a little more. The music has a mystical quality to it, and does enhance the experience for the most part. Although there are times when it creeps a little too far into becoming just ambient sounds rather than a full soundtrack and the game does lose a little something at these points. Graphics and sound receive 16 out of 20. Smoke and Sacrifice has officially been labelled an action RPG but do not be expecting experience points and levelling up to be found anywhere near here. Instead, you become stronger by using a crafting-based system, much like the game Don't Starve. The game is all about survival, and to do this, you will need to traverse a variety of strange lands, meeting new people or finding recipes that allow you to craft new items as long as you have gathered all of the required parts in your inventory. These items could be weapons to protect yourself, or consumable items that allow you to create foods to restore health, although you will need to find a cooking pot first to do this. You will also find recipes for more practical items. For example, early in the game you will need to get across an icy wasteland and stepping onto it will see your health deplete rapidly. However, find the recipe for the fur boots, search the lands for the parts that you need and then you can craft and equip the boots that then allow you to move to the new area. The parts you need in order to start crafting are found by scavenging around the plants and the trees of the land as well as by defeating the local wildlife, who will then be so kind as to leave behind a selection of bones, hides, meats and other bodily parts for you to add to your inventory. Items that you craft start to wear over time and will need to be maintained to stop them from breaking. If you repair an item it will cost you far fewer parts than if you allow it to break and have to craft a new one. The telltale sign for when to repair an item is it will begin to flash red so you need to keep an eye out for this. This is an interesting system but I must admit that it does become very cumbersome having to keep entering the inventory screen to repair items and a weapon break in mid-battle can lead to catastrophic results as you can imagine. You can also upgrade items, again providing that you have the right parts. This allows you to create stronger variants which will, in turn, last you a bit longer. The main problems with the inventory screen is that there is no real way of sorting items which can make finding what you need a little tedious Plus, you only have a limited number of slots. You can store stuff in chests that you find across the land, but you will then need to remember what you have stashed where. This isn't the only game ever to limit your inventory spaces. I mean, the Resident Evil games have been doing it for years, for example, but it doesn't make it any less frustrating. 
The story is moved along through the quests that you will be given from the local people that you come across. As well as main story missions, there are also side quests that can be completed and these will be added to your quest log so that you can check them at your leisure should you forget what it is that you're meant to be doing. Unfortunately, a lot of the quests are quite repetitive, involving a lot of similar objectives and a fair bit of backtracking. Whilst backtracking in the game is not necessarily a negative, it added to an unnerving feeling of tedium that I just couldn't shake whilst playing Smoke and Sacrifice. Having said that, as you begin to complete quests and open up more of the map, you will find these tubes scattered around. These can be unlocked using the coins that you will collect along the way through completing various side quests and act as the fast travel system for the game. Once you have unlocked a tube with coins, it remains unlocked and it can then be used whenever you want. This does help with the aforementioned backtracking to a degree. The game is quite unforgiving early on. Everything is out to kill you and it can be quite frustrating when you just want to go on a bit of a gathering session only to constantly have plants spit at you, wasps swoop at you and porcupines fire their spikes at you. If you are not able to get back to the save point before succumbing to the various hazards, you will lose all of the items gathered and have to begin collecting again. So with this in mind, it would be wise to save often to avoid frustration and help you build those resources up. Combat is also a little hit and miss, and some of this is down to the camera perspective mentioned earlier. It can make it a little difficult at times to know if you are lined up with your enemy or not. Another thing that may hamper you early on is that a lot of the food resources that you gather can actually expire whilst in your inventory. Just before I was about to fight the first boss, I went to gather a lot of the edible plants nearby so I could use them for a health boost when needed, only they all died in my pouch and I died shortly after. Again, keep an eye out for your food items flashing red in your inventory and use them at this point or they will be gone forever. Progressing further through the game will negate some of these problems by way of new dishes that you can cook and armour that you can craft, so perseverance in the early hours may be needed for some people. Gameplay in Smoke and Sacrifice is quite ambitious, but it also feels like for every good idea the game has, there is a clunky design choice just around the corner, and gameplay receives 13 out of 20. Controls are fairly simple in Smoke and Sacrifice. In terms of controlling your character, you use the left stick to move, and the Y button is for using the item that you are holding. That may be attacking with your weapon or using your bug net, for example. The A button allows you to gather resources, and whilst there is no jump button, the X button does allow you to perform an evasive dash move. Navigating menus is made easier by these being tied to the D-pad. Pressing up brings up your map, the left button brings up the crafting screen, pressing the down button brings up your quest log, and the right button brings up your item inventory screen. Now talking of this screen, you can favorite some of your items, and once you have done this, pressing the L and R buttons will cycle through these particular items to make them more accessible. Although I have mentioned a few flaws with the inventory screen, none of them really come down to the controls and are more down to design choices, so controls receive 15 out of 20. Smoke and Sacrifice costs £19.99 or $24.99, and an average playthrough will take most people anywhere between 15 to 25 hours. Although it is priced on the higher end of the eShop scale, it clearly has had a lot of love and care put into it. I don't necessarily think the price is unfair, as I admire the developers' intentions to create an interesting and powerful story with ambitious gameplay mechanics, as much as I regret the fact that they did not quite manage to match their own ambitions. It's probably the perfect game to recommend waiting for a sale on, and value receives 13 out of 20. To conclude, Smoke and Sacrifice is an interesting story wrapped in a gothic, almost melancholy skin with gameplay that intrigues and frustrates in equal measure at times. If you can get past a very slow and extremely unforgiving first couple of hours, it will certainly start to grab you, but it never fully manages to shake the feeling of some repetitive and fairly tedious elements that hold it back from joining some of the stellar titles already available on the eShop. Smoke and Sacrifice receives a switch up score of 73%. I just want to take this opportunity to thank all the new subscribers we've had recently. If you like what you've seen or heard, please leave a like down below. And if you aren't already subscribed, consider doing so for all things Switch, all the time. And as always, happy gaming.